Hello guys, it's your boy Dr. K once more. Yeah, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And um, you know, today I just want us to look through um, a particular topic. You know, recently we've been hearing a lot of people dying from heart attack, cardiac arrest. You know, and I can bet that people don't even know the difference between what heart attack is and um, cardiac arrest. They are two different things, you know. And it's important to to talk about it and to let you know what to do in cases like that. Because I mean, recently we heard of um, the stallion queen. Oh, you can't wait, no, no, she slumped and uh, died. They said she died of a heart attack. By the end of this video, you'll be able to decipher if she died of a heart attack or if she died of a cardiac arrest. That's the aim of the video, so that you know what to do when you see something similar, because it's very obvious. It's very common, rather. It happens a lot. You know, people just don't know what to do about it. As you can see, I'm wearing my custom-made my guy shirt today. Yeah, my guy come, you know, and uh, I hope sometime in the future I'll be able to put out some parts of a merchandise so you guys can also get in the groove you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah so let's get to it what's the difference between cardiac arrest and heart attack let's let's start from the definition you know a cardiac arrest you know it's a sudden loss of heart function you know like oh, police came to arrest somebody you know when police comes to arrest somebody the person has to stop doing everything the person is doing as a cardiac arrest, as there's an arrest. It usually it's caused by an electrical problem of the heart, you know, carrying, uh, when the, some part of the heart carry electrical activity from one part to the other that keeps the heart beating. You know, so when there's a disruption from that mechanism, then the heart goes into arrest, you know, there's an arrest. But then in a uh, heart attack, it's like an attack. <laughs> arrest attack you know how an attack will be attack also is sudden but then the difference between an attack and an arrest is when you want to arrest somebody you don't give person prior notice but when you want to attack somebody you have to plan <laughs> yes you have to plan for the attack so when there is a when there is going to be a heart attack there is planning the body plans for the attack Sometimes the pace, the human being will now not yield to the warning that comes before the attack. You know, you can't just go and ambush somebody. You have to plan in a way to attack the person. So it's, it's, it's as a result of a blockage of blood flow to the muscles of the heart. And that blockage comes from increased cholesterol. So you see, that cholesterol we check little by little it develops little by little it develops that's how it plans to attack the heart so when it's full blown it causes a heart attack because the part of the body the part of the heart where the blood uh, where blood supplies the part of the heart where blood supplies when that part is blocked off by uh, cholesterol that area loses oxygen and starts to die off you get that's a heart attack that's the first difference between a heart attack and uh, a cardiac arrest from when you, when you see this, from the standpoint of um, uh, from the standpoint of um, uh, what the causative agent how it's caused and uh, you know then symptoms in cardiac arrest there is sudden collapse you see the person going about his or a normal day day to day and boom person collapse that usually is um cardiac arrest is cardiac arrest and then that by the time you move close to that person you check the pulse there is no pulse you check the breathing there is no breathing then you know this person has gone into arrest but then for heart attack there is chest pain you know there's shortness of breast sometimes there is heavy sweating and then sometimes it's nausea. So you see the difference. In an arrest, the person just falls down and goes boom, like that. But in an attack, there's chest pain. You know, there was a time in my clinical practice, I had a patient who was brought in 
See, the guy is, is on the big side. See, he has been having chest pain for three days. You know, and then they brought him into the hospital unconscious. I mean, so, he goes without saying. When, when he says this person has been having chest pain for three days, then now the person is unconscious. The first thing the doctor would think of is heart attack. You know, other things you can use to differentiate them is how they start. The onset of action of a cardiac arrest is sudden and immediate. The person just goes, boom. <laughs> person just falls down, boom, like that. Or what they call slum. The person just slums. We yeah, are. This guy was active now. He was just speaking with us. And on getting outside, he just slumped. Or while, while, when he got out of his car, he just slumped. Oh, I just got off the call with this person. And the person just slumped. That is a cardiac arrest. But meanwhile, with a heart attack, is gradual. As I said, if you have, if you want to attack somebody, you plan it, so it's gradual. Over the years, uh, over the months, sometimes weeks, sometimes days, sometimes hours. You know, I I had a friend who was my senior in secondary school who had a heart surgery in the U.S. He was telling me that only this pain in my chest has been since when I was in Nigeria. Since when I was in Nigeria, and he left Nigeria for the US about um, um, two years ago now. And then on getting to the US, he had a heart attack, you know, where they now found out that there was blockage in the major vessels supplying the heart. They had to do a surgery to remove the blockages. So that's a heart attack. This has been happening over years. Also, patients that have a heart attack, as I said, they slump. So they lose consciousness. But for patients who have a heart, who have a heart attack, patients who have cardiac arrest, they slump and they lose patient consciousness immediately. But patients who have heart attack, they come to the hospital, they are still conscious. Most of them, most of them are still conscious. You see, there is this feeling they say, oh, that it feels like, it feels like there's something stamping on my chest. So it's like a crushing feeling. They have this crushing feeling. So the person just comes and say, Doctor, ah, there's something stamping on my chest. And they, they want to, they, they, they come in a manner where they, they, they grip their chest they tight, just, just this way, distressing and leaning over, like they want to remove that thing, pressing their chest. That's how a heart attack, that's how patients with heart attack usually present. You know, they present them and they will be like, Okay, this person is, uh, is having a heart attack. Another thing, when with cardiac arrest, you know, as I said, there is no breathing. They don't. They are not breathing. They are not. There is no heartbeat. So in quotes, they are almost dead, like that. Once they fall, they are almost dead. But in uh, cardiac arrest, by the time they come to the hospital, doctor checks the pulse, checks the heartbeat. The heart is beating, but it's not, it's very faint, you know, very faint. It's not working like it should work. So what do we do? <laughs> it's unfortunate that in Nigeria, we do not have good emergency response. And we do not have emergency response system. I know some very good emergency response services, but the system is not so good. And also, people are not skilled in the art of what we call cardiopulmonary resuscitation (CPR). For people who have cardiac arrest, that person doesn't need to go to the hospital. <laughs> the person won't make it. <laughs> if you want to carry a patient with cardiac arrest, oh, this person slumped. And are taking him or her to the hospital, the person will not make it because the person has just four minutes. Four minutes for that blood to pump oxygen to the brain. Four minutes. After that period, the person will die. Every effort made after that, that timing is usually effort in futility. So for somebody who slumps, the first thing to do is to resume what we call CPR, immediate CPR. I'm going to do another video to expatiate on CPR because CPR is a whole different topic you know where you do chest compressions 
you know, there's a way you angle your hand towards the chest, the chest area and compress. There's a way you angle your hand to pump properly because what you are doing is like you are trying to manually restart the heart with your own hands and breathing into the person's mouth and nose. You know, there's also a way you tilt the person's head so that the air you are putting is getting to the lungs. So what you are trying to do is you are manually trying to restart the heart with your hand and also restart the lungs with your own breath. You know, so that you can because because the person has just four minutes. So what I usually see, what I was telling somebody when I heard of um, a slumming accident, a slumming incident, rather, I, I, I told, I told, I told the lady, I said, okay, so, so the, the people who have cardiac um, heart, uh, cardiac arrest, they don't need to go to the hospital. The hospital needs to come to them while somebody is already doing the compression. I mean, the person is dead anyway. In four minutes so why not just do something at that point to see if you have a chance of bringing the person back but for heart attack depending on the level of the attack some people you use medication you know some people have to go to surgery you know surgery to remove the blood clots you know and also you know some no, no, no so, so you know surgery now has its own others side effects to a, a whole new a brand whole side to doing surgery you know but then it's for this patient's safety anyway so you can do surgery you can use medication for a um heart attack so i usually say you know as i said earlier for for a heart for a cardiac arrest you start your cpr and call emergency you call emergency call emergency because there's really nothing you want to do for that patient. There's really nothing you want to do for that patient except to just keep doing that CPR. You do that CPR continuously because by the time you start, if the patient is lucky, the, the, the you get a pulse. You know, then when emergency service come, they now come with their defibrillator. Defibrillator will now restart the heart act, electric activity by itself. It's not you. Your own is just to manually continue to compress and give breath. You know, then the defibrillator will now come and restart. So you call emergency service to come and continue the work. But meanwhile, in heart attack, the patient can still get to the hospital. Yeah. The patient can still get to the hospital. You know. Outcome. What was the outcome? Because that's, this is a very important part too. What's the outcome of... Uh, a heart attack and a cardiac arrest. For the cardiac arrest, as I said earlier, death within minutes. If you don't do anything, that person dies. If you attempt to start carrying that person to the hospital, ah, oh yeah, let's take the person to the hospital and lie. The person will never survive it because it takes just about four minutes. But when it comes, when it, when it's um, a heart attack, as I said, heart attack can can start little. Then that part of the heart just keeps getting damaged, damaged, damaged. You know, until there's a what we call a massive heart attack, I, I, and and to be to be honest, I I can't I, I can't remember having any patient recover from a massive heart attack because it means a larger portion, I think it's about more than thirty percent of the heart muscle is gone. You know, and there is no you know, if you, if you don't have um, somebody whose heart is available for transplant at that point, I mean there's I think it's a far cry. It's a far cry. Say far cry. So I mean, so what 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 are, what are the what are the risk what are the things that can cause what are the risk factors of this? I mean, they don't just happen out of the blues. Something could have caused them, caused it to happen. For cardiac arrest, if it has happened before in the family, then it can happen again. You know, heredity pay, plays a huge role in uh, in. In the case of um, cardiac arrest, you know, maybe the person's family had it before, maybe the person's siblings had it, maybe even a distant relative. So that person, so there could be an underlying heart problem. That person has, but the person hasn't noticed, you know, then maybe due to stress or due to some overwhelming emotions, then something just happened, or due to nothing, <laughs> or it could happen on its own too, you know, it just happens. Then that person will go into. Um, an arrest, you know, but for heart attack, 
the number one culprit is cholesterol, a high cholesterol. You know, when cholesterol builds up to a level where it now starts forming what we call plaque. I think I'll have to do another video for that plaque formation. So within the lumen, the lumen of the um, blood, blood vessels starts building up, the cholesterol plaque starts building up, you know, until it blocks it. And once it blocks it, blood cannot flow to the target area and also oxygen cannot get to the target area, then that area starts to die. You know, other things, hypertension, people who are hypertensive, that is poorly controlled. You know, smoking. I say smoking. Well, if you agree with me, smoking anything does not add any benefit, anything benefit, any benefits to the body. It doesn't give any benefit. So, you know, and then um, diabetes, of course. Any chronic illness can, any chronic cardiovascular illness or metabolic syndrome illness can make you become uh, prone to a heart attack. So, what should be done? Yeah, I think this where this is the uh, this is where we come to trying to prevent it. Trying to prevent. So, how do we prevent a cardiac arrest? Sometimes it's unpreventable, but when there is a family history of a heart problem or a similar occurrence, then you should take note and be wise enough because, of course, when there is a family history, there is a higher incidence that there is a higher probability that it will happen when there is family history than when there is no family history. So that's something you should also um, put in mind to to work with as as a human being to know. Okay, okay, because of the family history, I think I should be careful and check myself routinely. You know, there are some tests you can do to check for cardiac markers, you know, to know how the heart is doing. There are also some echo, ECG, you know, many, many things to do just periodically to know the state of, of the heart. But for a, for a heart attack, you know, as I said, it lays an ambush over months and years for you to attack the person. So as a wise person, if there's a family history of hypertension, diabetes, if you smoke, if, it's, if you are overweight, you should start to curb it. Start to curb it. You must also know the level of your cholesterol, you must know the level of your sugar, you must know your blood pressure readings, especially when there's a family history. And if you smoke, of course, it's a no-brainer. You know you should stop smoking, you know, and lead a healthy and better life because a healthy life gives you a happy life a happy life gets you lots and lots of accomplishments um i think with this few said i mean there's just some education out there now about uh, how to take care and tackle your health you know and watch out for cases where people have um, a heart attack where you need to take them to the hospital or when person has suffered a cardiac arrest where you need to start doing something immediately on the next time when i come your way again my guy come come and learn something enjoy yourself if you haven't subscribed make sure you tap that subscribe button press the like button and uh, press the ring button so that anytime i release the video you'll be notified stay blessed Wait next time